Morning, Mike, Twin Circle Farm. Had some technical difficulties with the update on my iPad, so we're trying to try to get some more videos. And I tried to set up for garlic. We're running late. The plastic needed to already be uh, laid in the ground. We've still got to separate the garlic by hand and plant it. We're already first week of November. Normally I like that all to have taken place and we'd be planting next week. Now, we had a hard freeze this week. Last night's temperature is down to 31, 90% humidity. In the meantime, I'm going to try to get old red here started and see what happens. She should be plugged into her block heater and didn't get moved over to the barn and plugged in. Cold start diesel, here we go. I hope it's not too loud for you and this doesn't cut off, but we're going to try to fire up Big Red. She's so pretty. Okay, come on back up. Sand it here, I'll put it back here. Whoa, shoot. Hold on to that. All right, gang. We'll do a little bit of disking. All right, go jump on your schoolwork. Third. Up in the air. Wheel drive set to auto. Well, thanks for hanging out with me this morning. Harvest is a tough time of the year. I'm having to replant for garlic this time of year. Some wet ground. This is going to be ugly. Very stressful, very stressful this time of year. Just a little. Oh! Try it 
trying to put together a video about uh, security pods that we've been building. Uh, I see some people beat me to it. <laughs> We're going to show you how we tra change our transplanter. We're about to start garlic. So I got to take the wheel on for the last crop that we planted and uh, switch it over to the garlic wheels. So we'll show you some of that and uh, how this 1200 transplanter from Rainflow switches over. It's not hard. So we added a couple of plate weights to it. It just seems to help these spikes dig deeper in the ground. Otherwise, this would be a little bit lighter. We'd do this a little bit faster for you. You can see it kind of ground off one of the uh, nozzles. It hits the ribs inside this pre-welded wheel. That's why we had a bungee cord kind of pulling it off to one side. Uh, next season, we're actually going to run this wheel dead middle. It's still set for how we planted garlic the last time. So all we do is pull these pins. So it's got plastic blocks that go in on each side, fit into those receivers and the pins hold it down. Come back here and grab that. And then we'll bring you around and show you what this looks like. So we'll roll this out and show you how we change them. And we got the machine up in the air. We have the machine up in the air just a little bit for this. <clears throat> this half inch. Yeah. These are square set screws, but a half inch opening works fine on them. So this wheel was a 48 inch wheel. So that means these spikes are 48 inches on center. You can order them pre-welded like this, or you can get the wheels like these, where you can mix and match, mix and match the spikes however you want to, and the water literally goes into the wheel and down out through a hole between the spikes. So they're slots, and the spikes pop in. This is five inch on center, and we're gonna do two wheels about five inches apart for garlic. Um, like I said, if you wanted to do 10, you just take every other one out, so on and so forth. And then they have these rubber grommets that fit in and block the water channels. So pretty simple. These two spacers on the bar are already set where we want them to be for garlic. And the space between the bars holds the water bracket. I should say they're probably going to be five inches on center in row, 10 inches between row, and that leaves us enough goof room with the drip line that's already laid in the plastic. The drip line should go down the middle without getting punched. These aren't sharp spikes, so the most you get is you'll nick a drip line, part of the repairs you do later, but they normally push it down and then you just pull it back up again or it'll reinflate when it waters. Same as the other side, he's gonna move it all the way to the set. Reach in here and just tighten the set screws. So if you're doing any kind of market garden, acre or more, I highly recommend this tool. It's designed for transplanting from trays. You can do it <clears throat> like our garlic from seed. It's a large handheld seed. Oh, I forgot to double check our spacing. I'm gonna offset those just a hair. And with the larger wheels, you have a lot of spacing options for different kinds of plants. So I want this one offset from that one and retighten. I was being picky, it was probably only off by a quarter inch. Now we just roll her back in place, put the two plates on, plastic blocks, and set her in here. 
I don't know if you can see inside there. So the plastic block goes on the end of that rod and they'll fall in those two cups and the long pins will hold them in and then the cotter pins secure those in place. So it's a little bit of maneuvering it in place, getting the blocks, getting the weights on the side, getting the blocks on, getting it up onto those arms. You can do this with on, on the ground, but it's hard to roll in and out. Scoot out, come on buddy. Um, because this arm is really light, you can lift it up into your block. So we'll probably do that after we get it in place. Because with both wheels and the, and the weights, this gets a little bit heavier. So we're gonna go ahead and raise the machine so I can get under the chairs, or we can come over here like she was suggesting, and these chairs should roll out pretty easy. And then again, I like to use red and tacky on the, the screw drive here. Go ahead and do yours. Miles, I think we're gonna be all right. You're probably gonna set it down instead. Give me a minute. Okay, let me get in past all the stuff. All right. Now it's got feet on the front, so he can't set it too far down. We might need to move those feet up, but it looks good from here. So go ahead and set her down on the feet. Nice and easy, just let her down. Okay. So now the cups, we just have to raise those up so it'll, it'll be easier to work with. I don't have to pick both wheels up and the plates. Oh man, these are 45 pounders or? 40, 44s. So why did we go with the plates? Because spikes every five inches, if the ground is a little bit stiff, it's hard to get the spikes to go in the ground and we need two inches of depth for garlic. So we started with weights a couple years ago and found a combination we liked and just kind of stuck with it. Get a little bit of twist in those too. We're going to have to re-tighten those set screws. Rolled that in with the weights on it, I guess. Plastic block on each end. Line back up to the center. All right, now we lift this up. Stop. Go ahead, lift it up. Hold it up. Put your pin up. Clips in to retain the pins. Now put the water back in the center. It clips on the axle, put its retaining pin in, and you are set. Set for garlic. And then, like I said, the offset was off a little bit, so we'll lift it up. I'll turn them and then I'll tighten those set screws a little bit more. That's it, switched over for garlic. Now you can add water, um, biologics, uh, whatever you believe you need when you're, you're initially transplanting. Some plants are specific. You can adjust each seed individually in and out, as well as up and down and the foot rest that you kind of use to push your back into the seat, they're adjustable. So if you're gonna be doing anything market garden wise, acre or above, it's on a 45 horse tractor. You get a hold of Rainflow, they'll tell you what you need and what, what different models they have and what kind of tractor it takes. This is hard neck garlic, this is music. Normally you see garlic in a bulb. <clears throat> So a couple reasons why hardneck garlic is uh, more expensive than white garlic. This can't be planted by a machine. This is uh, handled quite a few times before it even gets to the field. So we sit around the table, breaking a whole garlic into these individual cloves, leaving the paper on. Then they're put in baskets and brought out and then they're planted one at a time because they have to be oriented tail down. If they're sideways, you'll get abnormal growth. They'll be stunted and very small if they grow at all. 
So they don't machine plant these reliably. It's not like white garlic. Also, there's no chemicals. So some farms are certified organic. They can afford that certification. Something we'll look into, but we're sustainable, no chemicals. So if you want some seed stock of music or Spanish Roja that's delicious, that has never been exposed to chemicals, we've had this seed stock from an organic farm in Ohio for several years now. Um, it, it tastes delicious, two slightly different but distinct flavors. You just get a hold of us, go to our website, find us on Market Wagon if you're local to the St. Louis area. If you want to order in bulk, if you've still got time in your region to plant, We've got really good seed stock left for you. But that's hard neck garlic and why it costs more. <laughs> it is literally hand handled probably uh, between splitting it open, dealing with it out here, and then putting it in the ground, and then harvested, cleaned, put in the drying process to, to cure, then pulled back out all by hand. So that's the whole cycle. <laughs> Plant it, grow it, harvest it, clean it, put it in the drying cycle, let it process and cure, pull it back out by hand, package it for you for sale either as bulk or in small single bulbs, uh, not cloves, we normally do a whole bulb, or by poundage. So a lot of hand handling makes it a little bit more expensive, but very much the flavor is worth it and it's uh, it's, it's much better than white garlic, and we can tell you, chemical free. So, let's get some in the field and see what it looks like. So one of the reasons we like using this tractor, it's a hydrostat transmission. They have to plant these butt down every five inches. So this is our fourth year planting. This is our second year using the transplanter. World of difference, it's a lot more comfortable. But you'll see as we go, it's crawl speed. Like I would say you can't even calculate it as walking speed. I'd hate to see uh, the fractions of miles per hour, but it's gonna go one lug at a time because they have to hit that hole, orient that piece of garlic down in the hole as we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump on the tractor and we're gonna start moving forward. They've adjusted themselves in place. You can see everything's in arm's reach for them. That's why we like this transplanter. You can do it wet or dry. We'll see how the, well, how the ground's behaving today also. That's why we added the weights. So one lug at a time, every five inches. We always start off a little bit slower until the rhythm builds up and then they'll call for us to go a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. 